what relationship exists between the lines of the graphs of the system x plus 5y minus 2 is equal to 0 and 2x plus 10y minus 4 is equal to 0? Answer, coinciding or overlapping. If we multiply the first equation by 2, we get the second equation. In other words, the equations are equivalent and share the same graph. Any solution that works for one equation will also work for the other equation. What kind of lines are formed by the system 2x plus 3y minus 1 is equal to 0 and 4x plus 6y plus 1 is equal to 0? Answer, parallel lines. Since the slopes are the same, the lines must be parallel. How many solutions does the system y is equal to 2x plus 8 and 2x plus y is equal to 3 have? Answer, 1. A system of linear equations has one solution when the graphs intersect at a point. How many solutions does the system 5x plus 2y is equal to 11 and 5x plus 2y is equal to 25 have? Answer, none. No solution. A system of linear equations has no solution when the graphs are parallel. How many solutions does the system x plus 3y is equal to 4 and negative 2x minus 6y is equal to 0 have? Answer, infinite. A system of linear equations has infinite solutions when the graphs are the exact same line. What can you say about the graph of the system? x is equal to 3y plus 7 and x is equal to 3x plus 7. Answer, intersecting lines. Since the slopes are different, the lines must intersect. Completely. The quantity of m plus n squared minus 2 times the quantity of m plus n plus 1. Thank you.
equal to the square root of 2020 minus x all over x squared minus 4 in interval notation. Domains can be restricted if the function is a rational function and the denominator is 0 for some value or values of x. The function is a radical function with an even index such as a square root and the radicand can be negative for some value or values of x. following statement is always, sometimes, or never true. The contrapositive of the inverse of a statement is its converse. The contrapositive of the inverse of a statement is its converse is always true. The inverse of a statement is given as follows. If the polygon has more than four sides, then it is a pentagon. Give the contrapositive of the statement. The contrapositive of the statement will be, if a polygon does not have four sides, then it is not a pentagon. Or, if a polygon has four sides or less, then it is not a pentagon. the given rational expression p minus q minus p squared plus 2pq minus q squared all over q squared minus pq by grouping the numerator will be negative quantity of q squared minus 2pq plus p squared minus quantity of q minus p all over q times the quantity of q minus p the factors of q squared minus 2pq plus p squared are q minus p squared. The simplified form of p minus q minus p squared plus 2pq minus q squared all over q squared minus pq is p minus q minus 1 all over q. Simplify the given rational expression 8x cubed plus 27 all over 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. The factors of 8x cubed plus 27 are 2x plus 3 and 4x squared minus 6x plus 9, while the factors of 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 are 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. The simplified form of 8x cubed plus 27 all over 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 is 4x squared minus 6x plus 9 over 2x plus 3. 
simplify 1 minus 4m squared all over 4m cubed minus 12m squared minus m plus 3. The factors of 1 minus 4m squared are 1 minus 2m and 1 plus 2m. While 4m cubed minus 12m squared minus m plus 3 can be grouped as the quantity of 4m cubed minus 12m squared minus the quantity of m minus 3. The factors of 4m cubed minus 12m squared are 4m squared and m minus 3. The factors of the denominator are 4m squared minus 1 and m minus 3. The simplified form of 1 minus 4m squared all over 4m cubed minus 12m squared minus m plus 3 is 1 over 3 minus m. Simplify x raised to negative 1 minus 1 all over x raised to negative 1 plus 1. x raised to negative 1 minus 1 can be 1 over x minus 1, while x raised to negative 1 plus 1 can be 1 over x plus 1. Since it is a complex fraction, we can multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. That will be 1 minus x over x times the quantity of x over 1 plus x. So the simplified form of x raised to negative 1 minus 1 all over x raised to negative 1 plus 1 is 1 minus x over 1 plus x.
1 third minus 7 ninth is equal to negative 4 ninth. Negative 2 third x minus 8 ninth x is equal to negative 14 ninth x. x to the 4th power minus negative 2 ninth x to the 4th power is equal to 11 over 9 x to the 4th power. Negative x to the 5th power minus negative 5 ninth x to the 5th power is equal to 4 negative 4 ninth x raised to the 5th power. Solve for x in the system, x plus y all over 2 plus 2x minus y all over 3 is equal to 13 over 6 and 3x plus y all over 3 plus x minus y all over 4 is equal to 29 over 12. How many grams of each of the 60% and 80% silver alloy must a jeweler mix to get 20 grams that has 75% silver? Let x be the grams of 60% silver alloy and 20 minus x be the grams of 80% silver alloy. This will be 60% of x plus 80% of the quantity of 20 minus x is equal to 75% of 20. So x is equal to 5. 5 grams of 60% silver and 15 grams of 80% silver must a jeweler mix to get 20 grams that has 75% silver. This will be 160 minus 190 is equal to 1. Or t over 6 minus t over 9 is equal to 1. By multiplying both sides by 18, this will be 3t minus 2t is equal to 18. And t is equal to 18. Therefore, 18 hours is needed to fill the pool.
the length of the rectangular swimming pool is 2 meters less than 3 times the width. If the area is 65 square meter, find the dimensions of the swimming pool. Let x be the width, 3x minus 2 be the length, and as it is given, the area is 65 square meters. Remember that area is equal to length times width, so we will substitute it. Area B, 65 square meter, the length is 3x minus 2, and the width is x. So, the working equation is 65 square meters is equal to the quantity of 3x minus 2 times x. By distributive property of multiplication, we have 3x times x is 3x squared, and negative 2 times x is negative 2x. The equation will be 3x squared minus 2x minus 65 is equal to 0. By factoring, this will be the quantity of 3x plus 13 times the quantity of x minus 5. Since we're looking for the dimension, we will just consider positive 5. So x or the width is equal to 5. Since x is equal to 5, the length will be 3 times 5 minus 2 which is equal to 15 minus 2 or 13. So the dimensions will be 13 meters by 5 meters. There are two numbers. Twice the first number added to a second number equals 15. 3 times the first number is 30 more than the second number. Find the first number. Let x be the first number and y be the second number. Twice the first number added to a second number equals 50b, 2x plus y is equal to 50. While 3 times the first number is 30 more than the second number b, 3x is equal to y plus 30. Or x is equal to y over 3 plus 10. By substitution, this will be 2 times the quantity of y over 3 plus 10 plus y is equal to 50. 2y over 3 plus y is equal to 50 minus 20. This will be 2y plus 3y all over 3 is equal to 30. This will be 5y over 3 is equal to 30. By cross multiplication, we have 5y is equal to 30 times 3 or 5y is equal to 90. So y is equal to 18. Since y is the second number, we can use any of the given equations to look for the first number which is x. This will be 2x plus 18 is equal to 50 and 2x is equal to 50 minus 18. 50 minus 18 is equal to 32. By dividing both sides by 2, x will be 16. So the first number is 16. The principal of P pesos is invested in an account with an annual interest rate of 12% compounded annually. What equation gives the amount A in the account after 2 years? What is the measure of an exterior angle of an equilateral triangle? Remember this. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of two non-adjacent interior angles. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than either of the two remote interior angles. The measure of the exterior angle is supplementary to the interior angle. The measure of the exterior angle is supplementary to the interior angle. So the measure of an exterior angle of an equilateral triangle is equal to 120 degrees. Find the measure of the exterior angle at A. Remember this. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of two non-adjacent interior angles. Since x is equal to 60 degrees, the measure of the exterior angle at A is equal to 140 degrees.
find the measure of angle 1. First, look for the value of x. x is equal to 28.125. Since angle 1 is equal to 2x plus 6, this will be 2 times 28.125 plus 6. So angle 1 is equal to 62.25 degrees. Find the measure of angle 2. As obtained on the previous problem, x is equal to 28.125. And since angle 2 is equal to 6x minus 51, by substitution, this will be 6 times 28.125 degrees minus 51 degrees. So angle 2 is equal to 117.75 degrees. Rene wants to form a triangular frame using sides of length 13 cm and 14 cm. What must be the range of the values of the third side? The triangle in equality theorem states that the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the measure of the third side. So the third side must be between 1 cm and 27 cm. If one side of an equilateral triangle is equal to a side of another equilateral triangle, what must be true about the two equilateral triangles? They are congruent. Triangle JOY, JO is 9, OY is 12, JY is 15. Arrange the angles in increasing order. Remember this rule. In any triangle, the shortest side is always opposite the smallest interior angle, and the longest side is always opposite the largest interior angle. If we will arrange it in increasing order, angle Y is the smallest angle since it is opposite the shortest side. The second angle is angle J and the largest angle is angle O since it is the opposite angle of the longest side JY. The information in the figure to determine the relationship between angle SOR and angle AOR. Angle SOR is greater than angle AOR since side RS which is the opposite side of angle SOR is longer than the opposite side AR of angle AOR. Remember that the larger angle is opposite the longer side. A 4 meter ladder is placed to reach the top of a 3 meter tree. How far is the foot of the ladder from the foot of the tree? Take note that the ladder is 4 meter while the tree is 3 meter. We are to look for the distance of the foot of the ladder from the foot of the tree. Since there is a right triangle form, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have 4 squared is equal to 3 squared plus x squared, 4 squared is 16, and 3 squared is 9. So we have 16 minus 9 is equal to x squared, x is equal to square root of 7. So the distance between the foot of the ladder and the foot of the tree is equal to square root of 7. The rhombus of side 53 has one diagonal of length 56 cm. Find the area of the rhombus.
heads and teeth for tails to denote the result of a toss coin give the sample space for the experiment of observing the results of two successive coin tosses. Sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. The sample space will be head and head, head and tail, tail and head, tail and tail. Three coins are tossed. Find the probability of getting exactly two heads. To solve this, we will use the formula, the combination of n things taken r at a time, all over, 2 raised to n. Based on the given, n is equal to 3, since we have 3 coins tossed, and r is equal to 2, since we need to get exactly 2 heads. This will be the combination of 3 things taken 2 at a time, all over, 2 cubed. The combination of three things taken two at a time is equal to 3 factorial over the quantity of 3 minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial, and 2 cubed is equal to 8. 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1, while 3 minus 2 factorial is equal to 1 factorial, and 2 factorial is equal to 2 times 1. The probability of getting exactly two heads when three coins are tossed is equal to 3 eighths girls and seven boys want to be the two hosts for the school variety show. To be fair, the teacher put the names of the pupils in a hat and drew two. What is the probability that both hosts will be boys? Since there are seven boys and two will be taken from them, this will be the combination of seven things taken two at a time all over the combination of 12 things taken two at a time since there are seven boys and five girls and two will be chosen from them. The combination of seven things taken two at a time is equal to seven factorial all over five factorial two factorial and the combination of 12 things taken two at a time is equal to 12 factorial all over 10 factorial two factorial. This will be 21 over 66 or 7 over 22. The probability that both hosts will be boys is equal to 7 over 22. A day is chosen at random for the month of January. If the 17th of that month is a Wednesday, find the probability that the day chosen is a Friday. Probability of an event is equal to the number of ways the event can occur all over the number of possible outcomes. Observe the given calendar on the month of January. There are 31 days and there are 4 Fridays. The probability that the day chosen is Friday is equal to the number of Fridays on the month of January all over the number of days on the month of January. The probability that the day chosen is Friday is equal to 4 over 31. A newlywed couple plans to have three children. Assuming that both are fertile and can produce single offspring at a time, what is the probability that their first two children are girls? The number of outcomes in the sample space is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 which is equal to 8. Since we are looking for the probability that their first two children are girls, we will just consider a list in which the eldest is a girl. That will be girl, 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 boy, girl, boy, girl, girl, boy, boy. Observe that on the given list, there are only two which satisfy the given condition and that is girl, girl, girl and girl, girl, boy. So, the number of ways the event can occur is 2 all over the number of possible outcomes which is 8 and 2 over 8 is equal to 1 fourth. 
the probability that the first two children are girls is equal to one-fourth. How many even numbers are there between 250 and 450? That is the same as finding the number of even integers from 252 to 448. To find the number of terms, the formula will be n is equal to the last term minus the first term all over the common difference plus 1. So n is equal to 448 which is the last term minus 252 which is the first term all over the common difference which is 2 plus 1. So n is equal to 196 over 2 plus 1 and 196 over 2 is 98 plus 1 is equal to 99. Therefore, there are 99 even integers between 250 and 450. Find the sum of the first 25 positive odd integers. The sum of positive odd integers is equal to n squared. So if we are looking for the sum of the first 25 positive odd integers, that will be 25 squared which is equal to 625. Sheila will attend a K-pop concert which will cost her 1,092 pesos. Suppose she saves 3 pesos on the first day of the week, 9 pesos on the second day, 27 pesos on the third day, and so on, tripling the amount each day, how many days will it take her to save the needed amount? That is the same as 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus so on is equal to 1092. Since first term is given, which is equal to 3, the common ratio is equal to 3, and the sum is equal to 1092, we can use the formula for the sum of a geometric sequence, which is s of n is equal to the first term times the quantity of 1 minus r raised to n, all over 1 minus r. 1092 is equal to 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 times negative 3 raised to n is equal to negative 3 raised to n plus 1, all over 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. That will be negative 2 times 1092, which is equal to 3 minus 3 raised to n plus 1. So, by addition property of equality, negative 2184 minus 3 is equal to negative 3 raised to n plus 1. That will be negative 2187 is equal to negative 3 raised to n plus 1. Negative 2187 is equivalent to negative 3 raised to 7. The working equation is negative 3 raised to 7 is equal to negative 3 raised to n plus 1. To solve for n, we have n is equal to 7 minus 1. And 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. Therefore, the number of terms to have a sum of 1092 is 6. We can group this as y is equal to the quantity of 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Then, complete the square. To complete the square, divide 5 halves by 2 and then square it. So, 5 halves over 2 is equal to 5 fourths and 5 fourths squared is equal to 25 over 16. By completing the square, this will be 2 times the quantity of x squared plus 5 half x plus 25 over 16 minus 12 minus 50 over 16. A 
h is equal to negative 5 over 4 and k is equal to negative 121 over 8. whose sum is 16 and whose product is a maximum. By letting x be the first number and y be the second number, two numbers whose sum is 16 can be represented as x plus y is equal to 16 or y is equal to 16 minus x. While product is a maximum can be represented as xy. By substitution, we have x times the quantity of 16 minus x x is equal to h, which is equal to negative b over 2a. We have negative 16 over 2 times negative 1, which is equal to 8. Since y is equal to 16 minus x, y will be equal to 8. Therefore, the two numbers whose sum is 16 and whose product is a maximum are 8. Split 15 into two numbers such that the sum of the squares of these two numbers is a minimum. Let x be the first number and y be the second number. Let us represent this using x plus y is equal to 15 or y is equal to 15 minus x. x squared plus y squared be the sum of the squares. Fifteen minus x squared is equal to two hundred twenty five minus thirty x plus x squared. The working equation will be two x squared minus thirty x plus two hundred twenty five. Since x is equal to h, which is also equal to negative b over two a, we will have negative times negative 30 all over 2 times 2 which is equal to 30 over 4 x is equal to 7.5 and y is also equal to 7.5 therefore when 15 is split into two numbers such that the sum of the squares of these two numbers is a minimum of both 7.5 Solve for x in the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x plus 3 is equal to 6. Using the FOIL method, we have x times x is equal to x squared, x times 3 is equal to 3x, negative 2 times x is equal to negative 2x, and negative 2 times 3 is equal to negative 6. So we have x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to 0, and the factors of this are x minus 3 and x plus 4. Therefore, x are negative 4 and 3. Solve for x in x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. To solve, let us use quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. On the given, x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 1. By substitution, x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times 1. x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 1 plus 4 all over 2 and 1 plus 4 is equal to 5 so x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 5 all over 2 if the sum of the roots of a quadratic equation is 5 and the product of the two roots is 3 find the quadratic equation Quadratic equation can be written as x squared minus the sum of the roots times x plus the product of the roots. 
equal to 0. So, if the sum of the roots of a quadratic equation is 5 and the product of the two roots is 3, the quadratic equation is x squared minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. Find the quadratic equation whose roots are the reciprocals of the roots of 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 is equal to 0. First, get the factors. The factors of 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 is equal to 0 are 3x minus 2 and x minus 1. And the roots are 2 thirds and 1. Since we are to get the reciprocal, the reciprocal of these roots are 3 halves and 1. The root 3 halves when changed to binomial will be 2x minus 3 while 1 will be x minus 1. So 2x minus 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 2x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 3 or 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. So the quadratic equation is 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. Find the value of k so that 3x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to k has one root equal to 0. By letting x be equal to 0, k is equal to 6. Find the value of k so that 2x squared plus the quantity of 4 minus k times x minus 17 is equal to 0 has roots numerically equal but opposite in sign. Remember this, for the roots to be numerically equal but opposite in signs, the factorization of the expression would have to be the quantity of ax plus b times the quantity of ax minus b is equal to a squared x squared minus b squared a difference of two squares. This means a squared is equal to 2 and b squared is equal to 17. The middle term has to disappear and so 4 minus k is equal to 0 or k is equal to 4. Solve for x in 9x to the fourth power minus 37x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. First, get the possible rational zeros by getting the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient, which are 4 over 9. The factors of 4 are positive negative 1, positive negative 2, and positive negative 4. While the factors of 9 are positive negative 1, positive negative 3, and positive negative 9, so the possible rational zeros are positive negative 1, 2, 4, 1 third, 2 thirds, and 4 thirds. We can use any of these possible rational zeros. By synthetic division, the numerical coefficient of 9x to the 4th power minus 37x squared plus 4 is equal to 0 are 9, 0, negative 37, 0, and 4. Bring down the first term which is 9, so 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 0 is 18, 18 times 2 is 36, 36 minus 37 is negative 1, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2 is a factor of 9x to the 4th power minus 37x squared plus 4 is equal to 0 since the remainder is 0. Follow the same method of synthetic division to find the other roots. The roots of 9x to the 4th power minus 37x squared plus 4 is equal to 0 are positive and negative 1 third and positive and negative 2. 
solve for x in 2 plus x all over 2 minus x plus 2 minus x all over 2 plus x is equal to 2. Multiply both sides by 2 plus x and 2 minus x. The resulting equation will be 2 plus x times 2 plus x plus 2 minus x times 2 minus x is equal to 2 times the quantity of 4 minus x squared. Quantity of 2 plus x squared is equal to 4 plus 4x plus x squared. While, quantity of 2 minus x is squared is equal to 4 minus 4x plus x squared. And 2 times 4 is equal to 8 and 2 times negative x squared is equal to negative 2x squared. By combining like terms, we have 2x squared plus 2x squared is equal to 8 minus 8. So 4x squared is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to 0. If 9 minus x, 26 minus x, and 27 minus x are sides of a right triangle, find the value of x. Since the given is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So, the square of 27 minus x, which is the hypotenuse, should be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which are 26 minus x and 9 minus x. Quantity of 27 minus x squared is equal to 729 minus 54x plus x squared. The square of 26 minus x is equal to 676 minus 52x plus x squared, while the square of 9 minus x is equal to 81 minus 18x plus x squared. Combining like terms, we have x squared minus 16x plus 28, whose factors are x minus 14 and x minus 2. But we can only use 2 as the value of x since 9 minus 14 is equal to negative 5. By how much should you reduce the radius of a circle with circumference 48 pi centimeters in order to reduce its area by 47 pi square centimeters? First, determine the radius. Since circumference is equal to 2 pi r, the radius is equal to 24 centimeters. Next is to determine the area of a circle whose circumference is 48 pi centimeters or with a radius of 24 centimeters. Area is equal to pi r squared. So, the area of a circle is equal to 576 pi square centimeters. We are asked to reduce its area by 47 pi square centimeters. So, the new area is equal to 529 pi square centimeters. Its radius is equal to 23. 24 centimeters minus 23 centimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. Therefore, we need to reduce the radius by 1 centimeter. In order to reduce its area by 47 pi square centimeters. Find all possible values of x satisfying 2x squared plus 3x is less than 14. Express your answer in interval notation. To find the value of x, let 2x squared plus 3x minus 14 be equal to 0. And the factors of this are 2x plus 7 and x minus 2. The values of x are negative 7 halves and 2. The values of x are less than 2 but greater than negative 7 halves. Find all values of k so that 2x squared plus kx plus 2 is equal to 0 has no real roots. Express your answer in interval notation. If the discriminant of a quadratic equation is less than 0, that equation has no real roots. This is represented by b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. 
by substitution, k squared minus 4 times 2 times 2 is less than 0. So, k squared minus 16 is less than 0. Therefore, the values of k are less than 4 but greater than negative 4. The price per kilowatt hour of electricity in a certain city is 7.35 plus 0.01 Q, where Q is the amount of electricity consumed. Find the function f of Q which gives the total amount to be paid for Q in kilowatt hour. f of q is equal to the quantity of 7.35 plus 0.01q times q or f of q is equal to 7.35q plus 0.01q squared. If y is equal to f of x varies directly as x and the point 2, 3 is on its graph, find the equation for y in terms of x. Since y varies directly as x, this is y is equal to k times x. And k is equal to y over x. Since the point is 2, 3, we will substitute it to x and y. So k is equal to 3 halves. The equation for y in terms of x is y is equal to 3 halves x. If z varies directly as x and inversely as y, and if z is equal to 5 when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3, find z when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. z varies directly as x and inversely as y can be represented as z is equal to kx over y. By substitution, z is equal to 5, x is equal to 2, and y is equal to 3, this will be 5 is equal to k times 2 all over 3. By cross multiplication, 3 times 5 is equal to 15 which is equal to 2k. So, k is equal to 15 halves. To find z, when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, substitute 15 halves to k. So, we have c is equal to 15 halves times 1 all over 2 which is equal to 15 halves times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 1 half. Z is equal to 15 over 4. The horsepower required to operate a fan varies directly as the cube of the speed. If 4 horsepower is required to drive a fan at 800 revolution per minute, what horsepower is required for 500 revolution per minute? One of the basic fan laws. Horsepower varies directly with cube of speed ratio. By substitution, we have 4 times the quantity of 500 over 800 cube. 500 over 800 is also equivalent to 5 over 8. So 4 times 5 over 8 cube is equal to 4 times 125 all over 512. 4 times 125 over 512 is equal to 125 over 128. Simplify A raised to negative 1 plus B raised to negative 1 all over quantity of ct raised to negative 1. a raised to negative 1 plus b raised to negative 1 can be expressed as 1 over a plus 1 over b, while quantity of cd raised to negative 1 can be expressed as 1 over cd. 1 over a plus 1 over b is equal to b plus a over ab. B plus A over AB divided by 1 over CD is equal to B plus A over AB times CD. So, the final answer is quantity of A plus B times CD all over AB. Simplify 4x raised to negative 2, y raised to the 4th power, all over 6x raised to negative 5, y raised to negative 2. 
4x raised to negative 2y raised to the 4th power can be expressed as 4y to the 4th power all over x squared. While 6x raised to negative 5, y raised to negative 2 can be written as 6 over x to the 5th power y squared. Since it is a complex fraction, multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. The simplified form of 4x raised to negative 2, y raised to the 4th power all over 6x raised to negative 5, y raised to negative 2 is... 2x cubed y to the 6th power all over 3. Simplify the quantity of 5 raised to 0 x to the 4th power y cubed z all over 16 x raised to negative 6 y z to the 5th power raised to negative 1 half. Following PEMDAS, simplify first the expression inside the parentheses. That will be 5 raised to 0 x raised to the 10th power y squared all over 16 z to the 4th power. When these are raised to negative 1 half will be 5 raised to 0 x raised to negative 5 y raised to negative 1 all over 16 raised to negative 1 half z raised to negative 2. Therefore, the simplified form of the given expression is 4z squared all over x to the 5th power y. Simplify square root of x cubed plus square root of 25x cubed plus square root of 9x. Square root of x cubed can be written as x square root of x. 25x cubed can be written as 5x square root of x. And the square root of 9x is equal to 3 square root of x. x square root of x plus 5x square root of x plus 3 square root of x is equal to the quantity of 6x plus 3 square root of x. Rationalize square root of x plus square root of x plus 1 all over square root of x minus square root of x plus 1. To rationalize, multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugates of the denominator and that is square root of x plus square root of x plus 1. The rationalized form of the given expression is negative 2x minus 2 square root of x squared plus x minus 1. Solve for x in 2x minus 9 square root of x plus 2 plus 14 is equal to 0. Rewrite the given as 2x plus 14 is equal to 9 square root of x plus 2. Then, square both sides. The square of 2x plus 14 is 4x squared plus 56x plus 196. While the square of 9 square root of x plus 2 is 81 times the quantity of x plus 2. 81 times the quantity of x plus 2 is equal to 81x plus 162. Combining like terms, we have 4x squared plus 56x minus 81x plus 196 minus 162 is equal to 0. The working equation is 4x squared minus 25x plus 34 is equal to 0. The factors of this are 4x minus 17 and x minus 2. Therefore, x are 17 over 4 and 2. Cake recipe makes use of 1 teaspoon of baking soda for every 1 and 2 thirds cups of flour and the recipe yields 18 serving. If you need exactly 30 servings of cake, how much flour and baking soda do you need? That will be 1 is to 18 is equal to T is to 30. So T is equal to 30 over 18 or 5 thirds. Therefore, 5 thirds teaspoon of baking soda is needed to have 30 servings of cake. While for the cake flour, we have 5 thirds tea. So 5 thirds times 5 thirds is equal to 25 over 9. Therefore, 25 over 9 cups of flour is needed to have 30 servings of cake. A triangle has height H and base B. If the height is doubled and the base is tripled, 
what is the ratio of the old area to the new one? Area of a triangle is equal to 1 half base times height. If the height is doubled and the base is tripled, it is represented by area is equal to 1 half times 3b times 2h. So the new area will be 3 times base times height. Ratio of the old area to the new one is 1 is to 6. A rectangle has length L and width W. If both the length and width are tripled, what is the ratio of the old perimeter to the new one? Perimeter of a rectangle is equal to twice the sum of the length and the width. If both the length and the width are tripled, the new perimeter will be twice the sum of 3L and 3W. So the new perimeter will be 6L plus 6W and as compared to the original perimeter, the ratio of the old perimeter to the new one is 1 is to 3. If a wire which is 30 cm long is bent to form an equilateral triangle, what is the area of the triangle? First, determine the height. Since there is a right triangle formed, we can now use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have h squared is equal to 100 minus 25 and h squared is equal to 75 and the square root of 75 is 5 square root of 3. Therefore, the height is 5 square root of 3. Area of a triangle is equal to 1 half base times height. By substitution, we have 1 half of 10 times 5 square root of 3. So 1 half times 50 square root of 3 is 25 square root of 3. Therefore, the area of the triangle is 25 square root of 3 square centimeters. You are flying a kite and have let out 1,000 feet string. The kite makes 30 degree angle with the ground. If your height is not taken into consideration, how high is the kite? We will use 30, 60, 90 degree triangle to run. The shortest side is opposite the 30 degree angle and it is half the length of the hypotenuse. And the side opposite 60 degree angle is obtained by multiplying the shortest side by square root of 3. Therefore, the height of the kite is 500 feet. A right triangle has base 10 cm. If the angle opposite the base is 60 degrees, find the height of the triangle. Using the same concept on the previous problem, the height of the triangle is 10 square root of 3 over 3. The area of an isosceles trapezoid is 128 square centimeters. If the two bases have measures 5 centimeters and 7 centimeters, find its height. Area of a trapezoid is equal to one half the sum of the two bases times the height. By substitution, we have 128 is equal to one half times the quantity of 5 plus 7 times h. Then, 128 is equal to 6h. h is equal to 64 over 3. Therefore, the height of the isosceles trapezoid is equal to 64 over 3 centimeters. The upper base of an isosceles trapezoid is 6 centimeters. Its lower base is 10 centimeters and its leg is 5 centimeters. Find its height. Since there is a right triangle formed, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have h squared is equal to 5 squared minus 2 squared, and 5 squared is equal to 25, while 2 squared is equal to 4. 25 minus 4 is equal to 21, and the square root of 21 is still square root of 21. So the height of the isosceles trapezoid is square root of 21 centimeters. A tree casts a shadow of length 3 meters at the same time that a meter stick beside it casts a shadow of 15 centimeters. Find the height of the tree in meters. 
that will be height is to 3 is equal to 1 is to 0 0.15. By cross multiplication, we have 0 0.15h is equal to 3. And by dividing both sides by 0 0.15, the value of h is equal to 20. Therefore, the height of the tree is 20 meters. A rectangular pool 20 meter wide and 30 meter long is surrounded by a path of uniform width. If the area of the path is 200 square meters, how wide is the path? Since the pool is 30 meters by 20 meters, its area is equal to 600 square meters. Let us add the area of the pool and the area of the path. So, we have quantity of 30 plus 2x and quantity of 20 plus 2x is equal to 600 plus 200. The product of the two binomials is 600 plus 60x plus 40x plus 4x squared and the sum of 600 and 200 is equal to 800. The working equation will be 4x squared plus 100x minus 200 or x squared plus 25x minus 50 is equal to 0. To be able to find the value of x, we will use the quadratic formula and that is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the value of x is equal to 5 is square root of 33 minus 25 all over 2. In triangle ABC, the internal bisector of angle A meets BC at D. If AB is equal to AC is equal to 4 cm and angle A is equal to 60 degrees, find the length of AD. Since AB is equal to AC, angle B is congruent to angle C. And since there is a right triangle form, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of AD. So AD squared is equal to 4 squared minus 2 squared. 4 squared is 16 while 2 squared is equal to 4. So AD squared is equal to 12 and the square root of 12 is equal to 2 is square root of 3. Therefore, the length of AD is 2 is square root of 3 centimeters. Instead of walking along two adjacent sides of a rectangular field, a boy took a shortcut along the diagonal. How many meters did he save if the length of the field is 50 meters and its width is 30 meters? First, get the length of the diagonal. Since there is a right triangle form, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and that is, d squared is equal to 50 squared plus 30 squared where d represents the diagonal. D squared is equal to 2,500 plus 900 and that is equal to 3,400. The square root of 3,400 is 10 square root of 34. Next, find the total distance along two adjacent sides of a rectangular field and that is 30 meters plus 50 meters which is equal to 80 meters and then subtract 10 square root of 34 from 8. Therefore, the boy saved 80 minus 10 is square root of 34 meters. Two sides of a rectangle are 8 centimeters and 25 centimeters. Find the length of the diagonal. Since there is a right triangle form, we can still use the Pythagorean theorem and that will be x squared is equal to a squared plus 25 squared where x represents the length of the diagonal. 8 squared is equal to 64, while 25 squared is equal to 625. 64 plus 625 is equal to 689. Therefore, the length of the diagonal is square root of 689 centimeters. Given equilateral triangle ABC, if D, E, F are midpoints of A, B, A, C, and B, C respectively, what is the ratio of the area of triangle DEF to the area of triangle ABC? If two similar triangles have sides in the ratio x is to y, then their areas are in the ratio x squared is to y squared. 1 squared is to 2 squared is 1 is to 4.
Let A, B, C, D, E, F be a regular hexagon. What is the ratio of the area of triangle B, D, F to that of a hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F? First, get the area of the regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. That is 6 times 1 half times the base and the height. So we have 6 times 1 half times 1 times square root of 3 over 2. And that is 6 square root of 3 all over 4. Next is to get the area of triangle BDF and that is 1 half times the square root of 3 times 3 halves so that is equal to 3 square root of 3 all over 4. The ratio of the area of triangle BDF to hexagon ABCDEF is 3 square root of 3 over 4 is to 6 square root of 3 over 4 or 1 is to 2. A rectangular cake in the shape of a rectangular prism has width 9 inches, length 12 inches, and height 3 inches. If chocolate cake icing costs 5 pesos per square inch, how much would it cost to put icing on top and on all the sides of this cake? The surface area of a rectangular cake is 2 times the length and the width plus 2 times the length and the height plus 2 times the width and the height. That will be 2 times 12 times 9 plus 2 times 12 times 3 plus 2 times 9 times 3. So 216 plus 72 plus 54 is equal to 342 square inches. Since icing costs 5 pesos per square inch, we have 342 times 5 is equal to 1,710 pesos. So the cost of the icing is 1,710 pesos. Equilateral triangle BEC is drawn inside the square ABCD. What is the value of angle AED in degrees? In triangle AEB and triangle DEC, EB is equal to EC and AB is equal to DC. So angle ABE is equal to 90 minus 60 which is equal to 30 degrees. And angle DCE is equal to 90 minus 60 which is also 30. We can say that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle DEC by side angle side. So we have angle AEB is equal to 180 minus 30 over 2 which is equal to 75 degrees. Similarly, angle AED is equal to 360 degrees minus 75 plus 75 plus 60. So we have 360 minus 210 which is equal to 150. The value of angle AED in degrees is 150. A rectangular tiles each of size 70 cm by 30 cm must be laid horizontally on a rectangular floor of size 210 cm by 130 cm. What is the maximum number of tiles that can be placed on the floor if overlap and cutting of tiles are not allowed? That is just 210 cm divided by 70 cm and that is equal to 3. And the other one is 130 cm divided by 30 cm is equal to 4 and 1 thirds or 4. Then multiply it. 3 times 4 is equal to 12. Therefore, the maximum number of tiles that can be placed on the floor if overlap and cutting of tiles are not allowed is equal to 12. Angles A and B are complementary and the measure of angle A is 3 times the measure of angle B. Find the measures of the two angles. Since the measure of angle A is 3 times the measure of angle B, this is represented as A is equal to 3B. So, 3B plus B is equal to 90 degrees since angle A and angle B are complementary. 3B plus B is equal to 4B. The working equation will be 4B is equal to 90 by dividing both sides by 4, angle B is equal to 22.5, while angle A is equal to 3 times 22.5 and that is equal to 67.5. In right triangle ABC, the legs AC and BC have measured 7 cm and 8 cm respectively. Find the length of the hypotenuse AB. This will be AB squared is equal to 8 squared plus 7 squared. 8 squared is equal to 64 while 7 squared is equal to 49. 64 plus 49 is equal to 113. So AB is equal to square root of 113. If sine A is equal to square root of 3 over 2 and A is in the second quadrant, find the value of cosine A. 
on the given, sin A is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Since sin A is equal to y over r, y is equal to square root of 3 over 2, while r is equal to 1. And x is equal to negative 1 half. To find the value of cosine A, we have cosine A is equal to x over r. Since x is equal to negative 1 half and r is equal to 1, cosine A is equal to negative 1 half. If cotangent A is equal to square root of 3, and if A is in the third quadrant, find the value of second A. Since on the given, cotangent A is equal to square root of 3, and angle A is equal to 30 degrees, cotangent A is equal to x over 1. We have cotangent A which is equal to square root of 3, x should be negative square root of 3, while y should be negative 1, since it is located in the third quadrant. By Pythagorean theorem, r is equal to 2. So to find the value of second a, which is equal to r over x, second a is equal to 2 over negative square root of 3. The value of second a is equal to negative 2 square root of 3 over 2. Find the value of tangent b if second b is equal to 3 and b is in the fourth quadrant. Since on the given, second b is equal to 3 and it is in the fourth quadrant, second b is equal to 1 over cosine b, which is equal to 1 third and also equal to x over r. The value of x is 1 while the value of r is 3. So to find y, we have y is equal to square root of 3 squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to 9 minus 1 or square root of 8. The square root of 8 is 2 square root of 2. Since it is in the fourth quadrant, y is equal to negative 2 square root of 2. Then we need to find the value of sine b since tangent b is equal to sine b over cosine b. Sine b is equal to y over r, so we have negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. Tangent b is equal to sine b over cosine b or tangent b is equal to y over x. So we have negative 2 square root of 2 over 1 or tangent b is equal to negative 2 square root of 2. Find the value of cosine b if b is in the second quadrant and cosecant b is equal to 5. On the given, cosecant b is equal to 5, which is equal to 1 over sine b. Sine b is equal to 1 fifth, which is equal to y over r. Therefore, y is equal to 1, while r is equal to 5. To find x, use Pythagorean theorem. So we have 5 squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to 25 minus 1 or 24, and the square root of 24 is 2 is square root of 6. Cosine b is equal to x over r, and since it is in the second quadrant, x is equal to negative 2 square root of 6, so cosine b is equal to negative 2 square root of 6 over 5. Find the value of cosecant a if cotangent a is equal to 4 thirds and a is in the first quadrant. On the given, cotangent a is equal to 4 thirds and a is in the first quadrant. So we have cotangent a is equal to 4 thirds which is equal to x over y. Therefore, x is equal to 4 while y is equal to 3. To find r, we have r squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared. So 4 squared is 16 while 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25 and the square root of 25 is 5, therefore r is equal to 5. To find cosecant a, that is equal to r over y. Since r is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3, cosecant a is equal to 5 thirds.
if an angle is 20 degree less than its complement, find the angle. Let x be the complementary angle and x minus 20 be the angle. So the working equation will be x plus x minus 20 is equal to 90. It was equated to 90 since the sum of complementary angles is equal to 90. Combine like terms, x plus x is equal to 90 plus 20. x plus x is equal to 2x and 90 plus 20 is equal to 110. Divide both sides by 2. So 2x over 2 is equal to x and 110 over 2 is equal to 55. Since we're looking for an angle which is 20 degree less than its complement, that will be 55 degrees minus 20 degrees is equal to 35 degrees. Find the smallest root of x squared minus x plus 1 over 3x is equal to 2x minus 3 over x. By cross multiplication, that will be x times the quantity of x squared minus x plus 1 which is equal to 3x times the quantity of 2x minus 3. So, x times x squared is equal to x cubed, x times negative x is equal to negative x squared, and x times 1 is equal to x, while 3x times 2x is equal to 6x squared, and 3x times negative 3 is equal to negative 9x. Combining like terms, this will be x cubed minus x squared minus 6x squared plus x plus 9x is equal to 0. To simplify, that will be x cubed minus 7x squared plus 10x is equal to 0. To make factoring easier, get the common factor which is x. So that will be x times the quantity of x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. Since we have a quadratic equation, we can factor it. The factor will be x times the quantity of x minus 5 times the quantity of x minus 2 is equal to 0. The roots of the given equation are 0, 5, and 2. The smallest is 2 since 0 will make the given undefined. Factor completely 2x to the 4th power minus 16x. The common factor of 2x to the 4th power minus 16x is 2x. So this will be 2x times the quantity of x cubed minus 8. Take note that the factor of x cubed minus 8 are the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x squared plus 2x plus 4. How? The cube root of x is x and the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So, to get the other factor, we have square of x is x squared and 2 times x is 2x and square of 2 is 4. That's why we have x squared plus 2x plus 4. So the factor of 2x to the 4th power minus 16x is equal to 2x times the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x squared plus 2x plus 4. 
simplify 11 factorial over 8 factorial. 11 factorial is equal to 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. While 8 factorial is equal to 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This can be simplified as 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial over 8 factorial. So 11 times 10 is 110. 110 times 9 is equal to 990. Simplify the expression 3x over x plus 6 minus x squared plus 4x over x squared plus 6x plus 8. Take note that x squared plus 4x can be factored as x times the quantity of x plus 4, while x squared plus 6x plus 8 can be factored as the quantity of x plus 4 times the quantity of x plus 2. The LCD will be x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 6. This will be 3x times the quantity of x plus 2 minus x times the quantity of x plus 6 all over the quantity of x plus 6 times the quantity of x plus 2. So that will be 3x squared minus x squared all over x plus 6 times the quantity of x plus 2. In simplified form, this will be 2x squared over the quantity of x plus 6 times the quantity of x plus 2.
if 4x, x plus 2, and x minus 5 form an arithmetic sequence, find x. When we deal with an arithmetic sequence, we also deal with a common difference. So, the difference between the third term and the second term is equal to the difference between the second term and the first term. So, we will just equate it. We have x minus 5 minus the quantity of x plus 2 is equal to x plus 2 minus 4x. Combining like terms, we have 3x is equal to 9. And dividing both sides by 3, x is equal to 3. The sequence is 12, 5, and negative 2, whose common difference is negative 7.
Istio X. To solve this, let 12x to the fifth power minus x cubed plus x minus 1 all over d of x be equal to 3x squared minus 1 plus 2x minus 1 over d of x. By multiplying both sides by d of x, this will be 12x to the fifth power minus x cubed plus x minus 1 is equal to the quantity of 3x squared minus 1 times d of x plus 2x minus 1. By addition property of equality, 12x to the fifth power minus x cubed plus x minus 1 minus 2x plus 1 is equal to the quantity of 3x squared minus 1 times d of x. By dividing both sides by 3x squared minus 1, this will be 12x to the fifth power minus x cubed minus x all over 3x squared minus 1 is equal to d of x. And the factors of 12x to the fifth power minus x cubed minus x are 4x cubed plus x and 3x squared minus 1. Then, d of x or the divisor will be 4x cubed plus x. Semicircle. 
Since angle ACB is an inscribed angle, it is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So half of 180 is 90 degrees. that is 10 cm long is 4 cm away from the center. Find the radius in cm. In a circle, a cord that is 10 cm long is 4 cm away from the center. Find the radius in cm. Chords A, B, and C, D intersect at P. If A, P is 4, B, P is 12, and C, P is 3, find D, P. If two chords intersect, then the product of the measures of the parts of one chord is equal to the product of the measures of the parts of the other chord. The product of A, P, and B, P is equal to the product of C, P, and D, P. This will be 4 times 12 is equal to 3 times x. So, 48 is equal to 3x. By dividing both sides by 3, x is equal to 16 or dp is equal to 16. In the previous problem, AB is extended B and B to a point Q outside the circle with BQ is equal to 9. Point R is chosen on the circle so that QR is tangent to the circle. Find QR. In the previous problem, AB is extended B and B to a point Q outside the circle with BQ is equal to 9. Point R is chosen on the circle so that QR is tangent to the circle. Find QR. If a tangent segment and a second segment are drawn to a circle from an exterior point, then the square of the measure of the tangent segment is equal to the product of the measures of the second segment and its external second segment. This will be QR squared is equal to the product of AQ and BQ. AQ is 4 plus 12 plus 9 while BQ is 9. QR squared is equal to 25 times 9, and 25 times 9 is equal to 225, and the square root of 225 is 15, so QR is 15. A circle, chords PQ and RS intersect at T. If arc PS is equal to 47 degrees, and arc QR is equal to 85 degrees, find angle STP. In a circle, chords PQ and RS intersect at T. If arc PS is equal to 47 degrees and arc QR is equal to 85 degrees, find angle STP. The measure of the angle formed by two chords that intersect inside the circle is the average of the measure of the intercepted arcs. To find angle STP, add 85 and 47 divided by 2. So, 85 plus 47 is equal to 132, and half of 132 is 66. So, the measure of angle STP is equal to 66 degrees. Chords AB and CD are extended to intersect at point E outside the circle, with B and D closer to E than A and C. If arc AC is 130 degrees, and angle AEC is 28 degrees, find arc BD. Chords AB and CD are extended to intersect at point E outside the circle, with B and D closer to E than A and C. If arc AC is 113 degrees, and angle AEC is 28 degrees, find arc BD. If two chords intersect outside a circle, then the measure of an angle formed by the two chords is one half the positive difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. 
this will be 28 degrees is equal to half of 113 degrees minus arc BD. Arc BD will be negative 56 plus 113 which is equal to 57 degrees.
guys are rolled, find the probability that all the resulting numbers are equal. can four digit even numbers be formed using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 if digits can be repeated. Six times seven times seven times four is equal to one thousand one hundred seventy six.
one-third of the 60 grade 9 students live in Barangay A, and half of the 40 grade 10 students live in Barangay A. The rest of the grade 9 and grade 10 students live in Barangay B. Find the probability that a student chosen at random is in grade 10 or lives in Barangay B. One-third of 60 is 20. Therefore, there are 20 grade 9 students who live in Barangay A, while half of 40 is 20, then 20 students from grade 10 live in Barangay A. There are 40 students who live in Barangay A. The rest live in Barangay B. 40 students from grade 9 and 20 students from grade 10 and a total of 60 students live in Barangay B. We are to look for the probability that a student chosen at random is in grade 10 or lives in Barangay B. That will be probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. Probability of A represents the probability that the student chosen is grade 10, while probability of B represents that the student chosen lives in Barangay B. Probability of A is 40 over 100, while probability of B is 60 over 100, and the probability of A and B is 20 over 100. 40 plus 60 is 100 minus 20 is equal to 80 over 100, and 80 over 100 is equal to 4 fifth. So, the probability that a student chosen at random is in grade 10 or lives in Barangay B is 4 fifth.